All right, at this time, the court will inquire then from the jury. Uh, has the jury reached a verdict? Yeah. Very well. If you have the verdict form, I'd ask the bailiff bring that over here and we'll have it brought to the clerk to be read. The court has reviewed the verdict form, find that it's been properly completed, signed and dated. So at this time, I'll direct the clerk to please read the verdict into the record. The defendant would please rise. In the District Court of the 7th Judicial District of the State of Idaho, in and for the County of Fremont, State of Idaho Plaintiff versus Lori Noreen Ballow, aka Lori Noreen Daybell, Defendant, case number CR2221624. Verdict. We, the jury, duly impaneled and sworn to try the above entitled action for our verdict, unanimously answer the questions submitted to us as follows. Question number one. In regards to count one of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tylee Ryan and grand theft by deception? Answer, guilty. Question number two. In regards to count two of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Tylee Ryan? Answer, guilty. Question number three, in regards to count three of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow and grand theft by deception? Answer, guilty. Question number four, in regards to count four of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Ballow? Answer, guilty. Question number five. In regards to count five of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Ballow not guilty or guilty of conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell? Answer, guilty. Question number six, in regards to count seven of the amended indictment, is Lori Noreen Vallow not guilty or guilty of grand theft? Answer, guilty. Dated this 12th day of May, 2023, signed by the presiding officer. All right, please be seated. Madam Clerk, thank you for reading the verdict into the record. At this time, let me just inquire of the jury, is this in fact your true and correct verdict? Yes. Thank you. Let me ask now from counsel, does the state wish to have the jury poll? We do not, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to have the jury poll? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, the jury will be polled at this time. Madam Clerk, if you would please indicate only by juror numbers of each of the jurors if this is their true and correct verdict individually. Juror number four, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes, it is. Juror number five, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number six, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number eight, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number nine, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 10, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 11, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 12, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 13, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 14, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. Juror number 15, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. 
Juror number 16, is this your true and correct verdict? Yes. All right, thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. The court does find it's a unanimous verdict in this case, so I will direct the clerk to record the verdict into the record of this case. I'll now have a closing jury instruction for our jurors and also those alternate jurors that are in attendance today. You have now completed your duties as jurors in this case and are discharged with the sincere thanks of this court. The question may arise as to whether you may discuss this case with the attorneys or with anyone else. For your guidance, the court instructs you that whether you talk to the attorneys or to anyone else is entirely your own decision. It is proper for you to discuss this case if you want to, but are you, you are not required to do so and you may choose not to discuss the case with anyone at all. If you choose to talk to someone about the case, you may tell them as much or little as you like about your deliberations or the facts that influenced your decision. If you decide to discuss the case with anyone, you should be careful to respect the privacy and feelings of your fellow jurors. You should limit your comments to your own perceptions and feelings if anyone persists in discussing the case over your objections or becomes critical of your service either before or after any discussion has begun, please report that to me. At this time, then, the court offers its sincere thanks to the jurors. I appreciate your patience and attentiveness throughout this lengthy trial. I also thank you again for upholding your important civic duty as jurors in this case. I'd also like to thank the attorneys who tried this case for your professionalism throughout the proceedings and in the pretrial motions that came before trial. At this time, then, the court will discuss briefly sentencing in this case. In Idaho, pursuant to Title 19, Chapter 25, a report is required to be prepared before sentencing called a pre-sentence investigation report. In a typical case, that report takes at least two months to prepare. In a case such as this, it will likely take longer. The court will inquire as to a pre-sentence investigator for the time frame required to prepare the report in this case. Upon getting an estimation, then the court will reach out to counsel for determining a date for sentencing. I'll just advise everyone that will likely be, I'm thinking, at least three months probably before that sentencing can be scheduled to have the report completed. The court will also uh, advise at this time then, upon conclusion of the proceedings, the defendant will be remanded back to the custody of the Ada County Sheriff at this time to be transferred to the Fremont County Sheriff for further proceedings in Fremont County for sentencing. The court will also instruct the clerk to collect any of the jurors' notes pursuant to Idaho Criminal Rule 24.1a. At this time then, the court will ask that the jurors and any alternates in attendance be excused from the courtroom. And I am going to direct that all in attendance here remain seated until such time as the jurors have been completely exited from the courtroom. And in addition, I'll let the jurors know there is additional information you'll be receiving through the court administration offices on your way out as you leave today. So again, thank you for your service. Uh, court will be adjourned. And Mr. Bailiff, if you could have all rise for the jury. All rise, please. <laughs> Thank you, counsel. Thank you, everyone, for your decorum this afternoon. Court is adjourned. Judge, when would you like me to open the doors?